What is the true appearance and the true name of our Lord Jesus Christ? Many argue about the true appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some believe he is white and has long hair, while others say he is brown in complexion and has short hair. There is a verse in the Bible that indicates that his hair may not be long, however. Let's read it in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. It says, Doesn't nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? And wasn't Jesus a carpenter while he was here on the earth and grew up in poverty? So when you think about it, it's highly unlikely that his hair is long and his skin is white. There are those who say that this image of our Lord Jesus was taken from Cesare Borgia, the second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome, but can any of us prove it? And if I ask you, do you worship our Lord Jesus Christ because of his appearance or because of the sacrifice he made for us? Actually, it is really pointless for us to argue about this matter because no one knows the true appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you know that such arguments are used by Satan to destroy Christianity? It's because of this that people will doubt whether Jesus really lived here on earth or whether he was just a fabrication of the Roman Catholic Church. And if no one knows his true appearance, why would you put such images and statues in your house? That is why God commanded us to not make or bow down to idols or graven images, because the worship of God must be in spirit and truth. And we must walk by faith, not by sight. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, even though we cannot see God, we know he is real because he has shown us his wonderful creations and made up known to us the only way to salvation, our Lord Jesus. So atheists or those who refuse to believe in God will have no excuse at all. But if you want to visualize the form of our Lord Jesus Christ, this is how the Apostle John described him. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like undefined brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And soon we will finally see him and be with him forever ourselves. So let's continue in faith and endure to the end. As for the name of God our Father, many say it is Yahweh or Yahweh. There are also those who say it is Jehovah, Adonai, El Shaddai, Elohim, and many others. But do you remember when Moses asked the Lord God what his name was? God said, I am that I am. I am in Hebrew is the letters YHWH or YHVH. These four letters are called the Tetragrammaton, and in the written Hebrew language, their letters have no vowels, only consonants. So in order to spread the gospel to other nations and languages, they rewrote the scriptures and put vowels in it. They took the vowels from the word Adonai, which means the Lord, so YHWH is pronounced as Yahweh or Yahweh. YHVH is pronounced as Yehovah or Jehovah, depending on the person speaking or reading the Tetragrammaton. El Shaddai means God Almighty, and this is how God introduced himself when he made a covenant with Abraham. Elohim, on the other hand, is the Hebrew word for God. This is the same word used in the very first verse of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. This word is plural in number, as it can refer to both God and angels. But what exactly should we call God? Didn't our Lord Jesus Christ teach us that when we pray we should call God our Father in heaven? And if we ask anything, we should ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. However, some people also say that Jesus is not his real name. They claim that Jesus means Hail Zeus, and of course Zeus is the name of the god of the pagan Greeks. But if you examine carefully, the name Jesus is the English translation of Iesus, derived from the Greek transliteration of Yeshua. Yeshua or Yeshua is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in Hebrew and it is derived from the name of God Yahweh or Yah and Shua which means salvation. This is why the name of Yeshua means God is salvation. And if you look at Strong's Concordance, the name of Jesus means Jehovah is salvation. So the meaning of the name Jesus and Yeshua are the same. So whether you call our Lord Yeshua or Jesus, God knows that you are not worshiping Zeus but our Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, it is really pointless for us to even argue about this because Yeshua or Jesus is the only name of our Lord here on earth, not in heaven. 
Let's read it in Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. Here the Apostle John describes the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says here, And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And in Revelation chapter 22 verse 4 it says that in the new heavens and new earth we will finally see the face of God and his name shall be in our foreheads. Therefore we will only know God's true name when we are with him in the new heavens and the new earth. Why? Because we humans are sinful by nature. And many of us when we get surprised say OMG or oh my god. And notice when you watch Hollywood movies, don't they always use the name of God or the Lord Jesus Christ when they curse or swear? The Trinity? That cracked the IRSD base. That was a long time ago. Jesus. So God will not allow us to know his true name yet, because he knows many of us will defile or use it in vain. Remember, we worship God in spirit and truth, so even if you pronounce God's name in Hebrew or Greek, it won't matter if you are not doing his will or if you are still living in sin. And just a reminder, when you write the name of God and our Lord Jesus, use the proper case for names, and that is capitalize the first letter because when you use small g for God, you are not referring to him, but to the angels, even the fallen ones like Satan.